Are you in a, are you in a golf buggy? <laughs> yeah, we just finished. <laughs> That's Good. cool. Where are you? Uh, I'm just at home. I'm in, I'm in London. Oh, nice, nice. I love how, London. How did you do today? Not great, not great. I think I'm I'm gonna quit again. No, <laughs> <laughs> no it's fun. I got to come to come and play with family, so it was oh, awesome. Nice. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's better than me. I've never started, but I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna begin. I really enjoyed yeah. uh, uh, enjoyed blood. I, I was gonna. So first I'll ask him because I, I loved how it was felt like this character felt like a kind of familiar role that of the dad who hasn't got kind of custody to his kids and it's a role in cinema we see but so often the dad takes on a kind of villainous kind of quality but in this case he seems like a good guy and it felt like a really positive portrayal in many ways of, of a kind of of just a modern kind of dad and a modern sort of family in a kind of strange unconventional way and um, is that something that stood out to you when you kind of first read this this story? Uh, absolutely, yeah. I'm, in fact, I'm I'm really honored and flattered that you picked up on that. I, it was something that you know I keyed on into early, and that um, that Brad was really into, and Michelle was really into. Um, you know, I it's it sort of under the idea that I, she could seem really villainous, and she has to, in you know, she has to be our hero. And by the how he was portrayed could really make her seem even worse. So I wanted it to feel like somebody who could have been in, you know, that she would have been in a relationship. Who was he when she met him in high school? She became a drug addict. But, you know, where did he stand on the spectrum? And so we really tried to uh, to lower the stand, the class standing a lot and 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 sort of make a working man, you know, out of him that was trying to do his best and that had his flaws, but had to pick up for hers and, you know, all the complexities of that. And, you know, all really in a, in sort of a reverse red herring against himself uh, with him thinking she's back on drugs and winding up in the wrong about that. But, um, but yeah, I mean, Brad does really complex characters and stories and the way they interweave is always so compelling to me. So uh, yeah, that was something we talked quite a bit about. Yeah, it must be great. I mean, I, I, I didn't interview today with an actor uh, for the new sort of M. Night Shyamalan film. And he was kind of saying that, like, he, he was quite daunted at the prospect of a role because it was, there was so much acting to do. These characters with these kind of internal complexities. Is it quite, when you play characters have got a lot going on, is it quite, is it ever so slightly daunting as well as being a sort of something you relish in and a sort of challenge that you kind of want to rise to? Yeah, I mean, I think it's it's definitely it's always daunting. Every aspect of it is, is daunting to some degree. And I, you know, I, I've heard it said many, many times from, you know, actors much more famous and, and much better than I that, you know, it's the fear that makes you work really hard um, of fear of sucking or letting down those moments, all that stuff. But yeah, it's quite daunting. But it also you also realize that our, our every, all of us as individuals are equally complex. And the more we can sort of allow those things to be affected by how we, you know, uh, are affected by things, the more you can live in the moment, the more people relate to. So um, it's daunting, but at the same time, like, it's just a matter of letting go uh, into into much preparation, letting go into months of thoughts sometimes of how this could be. So I, I don't know. It's a it, it is complex yeah um, so I, I mean obviously the relationship between yourself and, and Michelle and this is very complex but I was wondering because obviously we only see the relationship when it's quite toxic but do you have yeah. to picture it and imagine it when it's good to be able to understand when it becomes bad if that makes sense absolutely it was something we talked about that Brad worked on a backstory for you know them and the, sort of a timeline of their backstory and you know something we did put a, quite a bit of thought into and and then you know you kind of give it all that thought forethought and then go play and you know she was so mesmerizingly raw and real um that it was quite compelling just being in the moment with her you know trying to figure out what in the fuck is going on like you know um so so that you know a lot of that is just she helped elevate everybody by her realness and um and you know brad's just so talented i mean I, the, the chance to work with him was such a dream um loved his films for so long and 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 so it, 
yeah, it was a great team of people. Um, but yeah, an interesting story with, I, you know, I don't really know where it ends. <laughs> yeah. 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 But I mean, you mentioned about working with Michelle in this. There's a scene, I think, when you guys are kind of both sat with your respective lawyers and you both just have to let, just lose it in that moment. What, how is it when you're on days like, on days like set like that, when, when like, Brad will shout cut, do you kind of have to just go from the start? How do you generate that kind of emotion over and over again? <laughs> Um, it's, you know, um, in that, you know, that was a really, uh, yeah, that was an intense day for sure. And it was, uh, it was, I guess in some ways a very personal day. Um, it was, you know, having been a single parent for, you know, 20 some years now and dealt with, um, you know, the complexities of that. I know we keep using that word, but it's, certainly fitting in this instance you know it was it was i was going I, I you know brag said to me at one point you're so harsh and i was like it's too harsh isn't it it's too like we're biting into it too hard and and we sort of brought it back a little bit but it you know it was something for some reason that can resonated with each of us um in 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 such a uh fun way in a lot of ways like we walked away from it going oh wow i i don't know if that was like you know, us venting or the characters venting or what it was, but it was, it was, and, you know, then you just hope it fits into the shape of the, how the story unfolds tonally, um, you know, and, and that, that's, you know, why Brad is so genius. He's such a great guide of tone and, 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 you know, you know, you have a conductor in front of you. So, yeah. And it's a really incredible performance from the young Finley as well. Uh, just how, yeah. how impressed were you by him? And do you feel uh, as an actor on set when you're playing, it's not just the kind of dynamic where you're playing his dad anyway, but like, do you ever feel a responsibility to help guide young actors kind of through scenes when you're working with them, like on projects like this? I, You know, no. I mean, he, you know, they were both Skylar and Finley were so there and present and fun to be around, but also had done their homework and, continued to do their homework and were there to play and brad had such a way with them that like you know we were quite loose between takes because we knew that everybody was doing their job and to uh, you know and doing it really well so i did he didn't need anything from me other than a buddy to pal around with and make jokes with and you know and uh they're both incredible performers and i, I think they're going to be around a long time um if they decide to continue to do this yeah, it always um, it blows my mind when kids are so good at that. Because I think when I was like a ten or eleven, I wouldn't have been able, I wouldn't even got close to doing that. I, <laughs> I know, I no, know. No. It blows my mind when I see that it's actually a craft for them, and I see who they really are, and that they are actually working. It's you know there are a lot of kids with charisma and whatever you know, and you could just put them in the right thing and it's going to work. But when you get to know these two, and you see that they're really crafting something. It's not just them being them and, you know, and maybe we'll get it. Like they're really have something figured out. And so it's really inspiring and, uh, and fun to be around. Yeah. And looking back across, I mean, because you've had such a sort of sort of great sort of interesting career. And there's, I was wondering now, sort of sort of like when you've got this, maybe, you know, kind of you've been doing this for quite a few years now. Do you ever sort of look back and feel like quite proud of your career? And do you still think there's more to do? Are there things you still want to kind of tick off the list? <laughs> um, uh, hang on, I'm going to jump in this car with everybody. Uh, you know, a bit of both. Absolutely. I, I definitely think, you know, I look at the the people I've been able to work alongside and, you know, and, um, and I feel, you know, really honored to, you know, I always say to people really the highlight was getting a phone call from Gary Oldman asking me to do a movie with him. And I, that was somebody that was a hero of mine forever and things like that. And standing across from some of these greats and like knowing I'm in, I'm worried and, they're in, and I'm probably, you know, and it's, and and then the other side, yeah, I, I, there's so much more I want to do. And I feel like now I'm, I'm in a place to kind of go all over and do that anywhere. You know, I kind of only worked in L.A. for a long time for family reasons. And now I can go do blood and do a show I just did in New Orleans with Giancarlo 
Esposito, and, you know, uh, I, I have a freedom that I haven't had in a long, long time. That's exciting. And, and I, I'm, I'm excited just to continue to, to keep telling stories of any size, shape and form. <laughs> Um, I spoke to, um, to Giancarlo last year and it was honestly one, one of my favorite interviews I've done. That guy's a real character. Um, but just for, for my very final, yeah, yeah. my very final question before I do go, because I was actually interesting. I was, I was, in, I interviewed Sarah Michelle Geller today and she was talking about how she's kind of got to wow. a stand where she's sort of so happy to talk about like Buffy now. And I was wondering as someone yourself, who's going yeah. to, the roles in your career say like Riverdale I'm sure at times maybe it's been tiring kind of like being recognized for something but ultimately that does it get to a stage where you kind of are quite just pleased it's connected with audiences and, and you treat that like a, a good thing did it take a while to get to that place you know the only way I can really answer it is that, that there's not, I am always honored when somebody comes up and, and asks me for an autograph or recognize and not because of the celebrity or the fame just that they've seen you know, stuff I've, that, that anybody has even seen that is um, is kind of so. Yeah, I mean, you know, it it's never been daunting to me. I've never lived Brad Pitt's life, you know, so I don't have any any qualms about that aspect of it at all. And to me, it's kind of an honor that people really even care to see something I do. So, um, you know, Scream has been really interesting. It's I'm very proud, you know, gained an audience for 26 years now and I go to these signing conventions with Matt Lillard and Nev and Jamie and David Arquette sometimes and it's there's still a rabid rabid fan base that has keeps going through generations like there are teenagers now that are more rabid about it than teenagers were then which is really interesting and um I don't know why I mean I Wes Craven was a very smart man and you know knew what he was doing but never predict that but yeah it's I, I i know what she means it's you know after you know in the beginning of my career and it was all scream I, I, you know i was like oh my god i don't want to be associated with just scream you know and and uh so i haven't been so that's good but um but i know what she means there's a release from that eventually of oh whatever <laughs> it's a great thing in in hindsight yeah, brilliant well thank you so much for your time today skiing best of luck with the rest of your golfing <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you i'll need it ladies and gentlemen you're watching hey you guys hey you guys huh hey, you guys. is yeah. that from the goonies it is indeed, yeah. nice hey you